Welcome to Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women, the podcast that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Here's your host, Gary Wilson. Hello, everyone. This is Gary Wilson, and welcome to this week's edition of Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women, the podcast for you. Chances are, if you're listening, you're already in the game. You've got a business, you're a chiropractor, you're a dentist, or you're a professional in your field. You're a teacher, a fireman, engineer, military. Those are the folks that generally are attracted to this and welcome aboard if you, if you fit that category. And more importantly, if you own your own business or want to, this is the place to be because we do invest in real estate. But remember this, holding a bunch of real estate investments actually is not the end game. It's the foundation upon which you can launch other businesses and do things you really are passionate about. Um, I've got a great guest coming up here, Anna Jenkins, in a bit. She's been living the model, I've known her for years, and her, she and her husband, Rick, get to travel all over the place uh, in an RV. But before that, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you haven't already um, subscribed to the podcast, you can find it on probably 75 different channels. Obviously, the biggest are iHeart Tunes and uh, uh, Apple Tunes, Apple Radio. So in any case, um, also, the community we've been developing is growing quite rapidly. I've been doing this now for... For me personally, I've been investing for 33 years. I've been a broker for 17 of those years. And for the last four years, I've been traveling all over the U.S. and Canada uh, teaching this subject, which is investing in real estate the right way. We're not into the, the smoke and mirrors techniques here, guys. Uh, no money down, owner financing, buying on terms, all that stuff has its place, but it's not here. Okay, sorry. This is for people who look at investing as a business because it is a business. And when you feel, think, speak, and act like a business, I promise you, you're going to be way more successful investing in real estate. And it's a perfect example of that. So, uh, in any case, if you'd like to join the community, it's quite easy. Just go to myinventsandservices.com and look for the links for either bronze or silver, multiple levels you can get in on and, and uh, participate. So, uh, in any case, uh, we'll talk more about that at the end here. Um, there is a, uh, for those of you who are interested, coming up on April 5th, 6th, and 7th, is that there is a three day event, uh, Path of Prosperity at the Anaheim Marriott, of course, right outside of the gates of Disneyland. So come on out, bring your uh, families. It's Friday, Saturday, 5th and 6th, 9 to 5, and Sunday we finish at 1. Half a day on Sunday. So uh, more about that later, but for right now, I want to jump in and give you guys some really good meat and potatoes and a real live living example of, of success following the model. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to my one of my oldest, dearest friends, Anna Jenkins. So hi, Anna, how are you? Hey, doing great. If, if you could, uh, do me a favor. I mean, a lot of people, sometimes people may know you, particularly in Virginia, because I know at one point you were the number one agent in your region, and uh, you've been investing, you've been on the radio, you've got your own investor club. But for everybody who's in, you know, across the U.S., Washington State, you know, Missouri, up in Ontario, Quebec, um, tell us a little bit about who, who is Anna, because I want them to know a little bit about you. And then when you start telling your story, things will start to make a lot more sense, you know? Will do. Okay. Well, so since this is an investment podcast, I'm going to kind of focus more on that and um, kind of start out with what I was uh, a little bit luckily when I was growing up. Um, my mother actually ended up getting into real estate investing and helping investors. She was a realtor for a short time, but she actually more got into rental properties and, and doing that and doing management. At that time, I did like... Um, real estate, but didn't really think that that's where I was going to go. I actually joined the Navy when I was 19 and I was in the Navy for 11 years, but did also see the benefits to investing. So when I actually came back to um, Norfolk, I was in, lived in Spain for three years and then returned to Norfolk. I bought my first duplex sight unseen. So, um, you know, I've been in uh, real estate now um, 16 years and I was in the Navy 11 years. So this was quite a while ago. We did not have internet and all. <laughs> yeah. I know um, it doesn't sound too long ago, but it was at least, you know, like 20, 25 years ago. So we didn't have internet. I wasn't able. So I bought this duplex site on scene. Very pleased with it, though. So I was able to. Um, I lived in one part of it. This is what my mom kind of taught me. Hey, get somebody to pay your mortgage. So I was about, at that time, I think I was um, 26 and um, about 20 years ago. And I lived in one part and I rented out the other. What I found though, was I was like, you know, I really don't need that much space. And I'm in the military and I was being deployed and detached a lot. That was actually at the time of Afghanistan and Iraq. And so I really wasn't in the United States that much. 
So what I did was then built a smaller, more efficient unit for myself. I built a garage apartment over, you know, over the garage. And so I was actually able to rent out the two larger units. And then I lived at the smaller unit. So then when I later decided to uh, move to another part of Virginia and actually get into real estate full time, I sold that as a triplex instead of a duplex and did well. Now, actually looking back, I wish I did not sell that. (laughs) But at the time, it was a, a good good idea, I thought, at the time. I ended up getting into real estate sales. And like Gary said, I did very well. I had a team. I was um, had the top team in the area for over seven years. Also um, went into being a team leader at the time I worked with Keller Williams. So I would manage an office for a year and preferred to be back in the game. And um, so I got my team going again. But at that time, that was also at the time that my husband and I were kind of becoming empty nesters, and we wanted to invest in more property because we felt, you know what, that's our retirement. So I had had one rental at that time. Um, uh, My husband then bought a rental of his own, so we had two rentals. And then we decided that we made this goal that over 10 years, we were going to own 20 properties. So now we're at, you know, four years later, we actually own eight properties. But they also have multiple doors. So um, we have 15 doors um, with those properties. And so we're well on our way to our goal. Our goal is still 20, but we made it a little bit easier and more lucrative by adding doors rather than just property. So um, those make multifamily units, duplexes, triplexes, things like that. So that's going very, very well for us adding those doors. Now, also at that time, um, we... Uh, didn't really like what we were seeing in the property management realm. Both my husband and I were in sales and we weren't finding what we wanted. Um, People were getting calls returned and things like that. And then we said, you know what? We've done well in sales and um, why don't we add this cog to our wheels? So that's what we did. And we found out when doing that, that actually also helped to, of course, make us more money, save us money in our own property management But with property management, it's a more reliable and foreseeable future on the money side. You can see things coming six months to a year in advance with either sales or re-rentals or or helping tenants buy homes. So you see that. And then also with your property management, you're still doing sales or we still do sales. You know, it doesn't require as much face time. So we have a great team established. And um, so that's how Gary mentioned we can travel a lot. We bought an RV last year. We actually aren't even in the area. We weren't in the area before Thanksgiving until about mid-January this year. Mm -hmm. We were still working, but we were able to work remotely because we had an awesome team. So that kind of sums up things, I think, with me. Gary, I'm sure you have some questions and could add some things wherever you want me to touch on more I can. Yeah. Diana, everything you just described here, now, that was just last week, right? Well, what what about this week? That's, <laughs> Actually, the majority of it was just over the last four years. So. Yeah. Well, what's amazing here is I love the fact that you um, you are definitely open and aware to, and I, I won't just call it opportunity, but what I call related opportunities. In other words, it's all about leverage. You're already doing one set of activities. And all you're doing is you're looking for the the next most closely related activity, which doesn't require you to create an entirely new infrastructure. You can leverage the infrastructure you already got, you know? So if you think about real estate investing, remember I said in the beginning, guys, real estate investing is, when I first started, I thought, well, that's the end game. That's my ultimate goal. I'm going to be a big investor. I'm going to retire and never have to work a day in my life. Turns out I, I achieved that quite early and I kind of got bored. I'm like, well, what do I do now? I mean, I'm sitting on my deck, drinking coffee, the, reading the paper. My neighbors are all going off to work. And it, and it took me a year. I actually worked harder that next year uh, because it's like a, I felt uncomfortable. It's almost like a guilt thing. Um, but what I found out was I can leverage my real estate investing to other to do other things I love to do. And one of those things is I love building businesses. So back to you, though. I want to get into that the building the business part for a moment. But two things I want to touch on first is I got to ask you, do you remember what the price was of the first duplex you bought back in Norfolk? Oh, and then, my God. And what did you sell it for? And I'm assuming. I know you personally, so I know you mean Tidewater, Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia. But for the sake of the audience, there's a couple of Norfolk's. I've you know been to over 600 cities and towns in the last four years, and uh, but yes, yeah, so I know it's Norfolk. But you remember the price you paid for it and when you sold it, what that was? Just okay, for- I am gonna guess, but I think these numbers are correct. So 
I believe, I believe I might have paid one sixty five. Okay. And I sold it for two twelve. Nice. I think. Now I could be wrong. I could have paid sixty five and sold it for one twelve. But yeah. for some reason, the sixty five and twelve are in there. And like I said, this was twenty years ago, so it could have def. Actually, it's probably the sixty five and yeah. one twelve. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. probably more likely. Yeah, you're probably right. Now, what's interesting, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the sixty five too, because you know I used to live there. I too, I went to, yeah, I went to school there. Um, but here's what's interesting. You know, people are asking, well, that's yesterday's prices. You can't do that today. But, Anna, let me ask you, have you discovered the same thing I did, which is everything's relative, you know, price and time, you know, everything's relative. Like people that look at these prices now, I mean, my first house I bought in Virginia Beach, Virginia, I mean, a nice neighborhood with 63000 bucks was a four bedroom, two bathroom ranch. You know, today it, it easily be over a half million dollars. And I today I don't even flinch at thinking, well, if that's what the market is, that's what the market is. Back then, 63 was just what the market was. So I want to emphasize to people that the best time to get into real estate is now. You know, the old saying, you know, people people will say this all the time. Well, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and buy. I'm gonna wait till the market changes on a buy. It's better to don't wait and buy. It's better to buy and wait. I mean, would you based on your experience, look at you. 65 to 112, that's essentially almost doubling your money. Almost double. So, yeah. and actually, just to put some clarification on that, um, at that time, I bought it as a duplex, 65, yeah. and I had some work to it, but not too, too much. It was definitely livable. I just did some upgrades, things like that. I redid the floors, redid the cabinets, things like that back then. But when I added that other unit, which yeah. the other unit cost me about 25 grand to add, I do know that. And so, so now I've got probably what 90 in it. I made and and it was, it was only only three years. And back then, again, looking 20 years ago, so I made 22,000, you know, in that three year time frame. That's why yeah. I, I wish I never would have sold it. But yeah. I, I mean, I did make a good profit in that three years. Back then, 22,000 for a 20 some year old was pretty good. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and the, the, the one of the critical factors here is, you, and just t by the way, I, I got to tell you this for the for the audience listening, I. My first house I bought with my college roommate Socrates, and um, we paid sixty-three thousand for it. Like I said, we assumed the owner's first mortgage. It was a VA mortgage, and for those of you listening, you can still assume VA mortgages. People say that you can't assume mortgages anymore. That's not true. The VA mortgages are still assumable, and so are a lot of adjustable rate mortgages. By the way, too. In any case, um, you know, two years after we bought it, I got married. Socrates bought me out, and. Uh, we just agreed to the, whatever the market value was at the time, 75 or something like that. In any case, the bottom line is this, is I put 3,000 in, and two years later, I got 8,000 out. And while we lived there, we rented out to the other two bedrooms to two other guys, and my out-of-pocket cost was like $50 a month, you know? So um, in any case, so what I want to point out here for you, Anna, is for the folks listening, is you saw an opportunity to take that existing asset and improve the asset, not just by putting in new countertops and carpeting, but by adding another unit, and I want to I want to emphasize that because I've been to a few of your other places in you know in Northern Virginia, and you've done that pretty consistently, and you've done it very well. A nice looking work, I mean, beautiful. It fits in with the neighborhood. But talk a little bit about that because I want people to understand this: is uh, think outside the box, guys. Don't just see what you're seeing, see what you're not seeing, see what's possible with what you're seeing. So you see a single family home, and you buy it. Two or three years later, it's a three unit building. And you move from unit to unit while you're remodeling it, then you eventually rent the whole thing out and get the next property. So talk, if you don't mind, talk a little bit because that is an awesome strategy and it's worked well for you on record. You've got 15 units, you know? Correct. So what we've done is um, we started off, and it, again, like I said, this was about four years ago that we started and we were ISTE nesters, so this was easier. Um, we ended up going with, I guess you could say, traditional mortgages, so to speak, and things because we were able to um, get good interest rates with low money down because we were going to live in it. So like Gary said, we would live in it. And actually the um, first one we did was um, we bought it with existing three units in it. It was a short sale. It had mold in the basement and everything. And it was um, god awful, but it wasn't horrible. Right. And um, the upstairs was, was completely livable. So we lived in the upstairs while we finished and remodeled and fixed the basement that had two separate units in it already. 
So um, that one ended up becoming um, a three unit. We actually bought that for, and I will tell you, my husband is the numbers guy on these ones. He's got a, a strategic thing all out and I should call him in here. Um, I believe we bought that for, for 185 or 190. And um, that then we look at cash flow and equity and all of that. To this day, it would it would probably sell for over three hundred. Um, yeah. And with cash flow wise, our payment on that is is just slightly over. Um, we may have bought it for less actually, slightly over a thousand dollars a month. And so we cash flow almost two thousand dollars a month on that property. And wow. that, that's just awesome. And so the other thing that we is, is we don't scrimp on our properties. I mean, that property already, the upstairs unit had granite countertops, a nice kitchen with an island. You know, we did need to go in and paint. It already had nice wood floors. Um, the wood floors were damaged. So we did have to redo those. You know, um, downstairs, we ended up installing, you know, nice tile bathrooms. Um you know, so we don't scrimp on, on those things because the nicer you make your properties, the more money you can charge for them and the better tenants you get. So um, all, one of our mottos is that we're never going to buy a house in a place that we wouldn't live. So we don't buy in, um, um, I guess, um, class C, I guess you could say neighborhoods, things like that. Um, we buy in, you know, not great, not A neighborhoods, but B neighborhoods, right. mid-range neighborhoods. Um, you know, to where we can have a good family there or good people there, but places that we would not mind living. And we've lived in the majority of our units. And also what this was and how we do it, a lot of times, this was a large Rambler with two basement apartments in it is how it was. And that's what we like is we'll take a, a Rambler with a mother-in-law suite or something like that. And then that's actually a two unit. Yeah. Because in our area, the, the prices are pretty high. And to really cash flow in the way we like to cash flow, that's how we do it by having multiple yeah. units. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that you um, you don't just focus on one way to make money in a property. In other words, you mentioned cash flow and appreciation. So there's really four or five major ways to make money in rental properties. It's either net operating income, which is your cash flow after expenses, the appreciation, the property goes up in value, of course, depreciation, which is the, the write off we get for the pillage of owning real estate. It's an IRS write off. It's basically a paper write off depreciation. Um, equity pay down, which means over time your mortgage is being paid down, right, by your tenants, more or less. And at the end of the day, you can still have other strategies, extra strategies. You can maybe depreciate it down, you can refinance the whole thing. Maybe you could uh, convert it into a REIT, R E I T, real estate, real estate investment trust. Uh, maybe you can, your self directed IRA can buy a friend. There's all kinds of things you can do. Um, so, but essentially, or you can just sell it, you know. Um, but there's multiple ways to make money in investor real estate. And if you buy the right property, I like the fact that you buy decent properties because I learned years ago and I used to buy, you know, not not like um, war zone type properties, but they were they were on the like low end of C. Um, and over time, when I had better properties, the better properties always did better financially income and appreciation over time. I'm like, I'm just going to do that, you know, and boy, life got a lot easier. I had less gray hair. <laughs> You know, so I've heard some of your horror stories and they're pretty scary. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Oh boy, I had some real doozies, you know. Uh, the real property management is a real study in human relations, you know. Yeah. So let, let's talk about this for a bit. I know, um, and by the way, we used to turn Rambler for everybody listening, that's the same thing as a ranch or a rancher, depending on where in the US or Canada you are. But uh, at most of your investing, you're from a different part of the country. You grew up out, out in the Midwest, you're living in Virginia now. But um, in your travels, uh, let's talk a little bit about the where. So uh, I know you and Rick have just taken a, this past fall an awesome trip all the way up the East Coast, way up to the to the hinterlands of northern or northeastern Canada. But in your travels, do you ever find yourself looking to see what's out there, property wise, investment wise? You ever you ever do that? Me? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm, I'm glad because I do the same. But tell us a little bit about because people, I tell you, I go I travel all over and and people I hear all the time. Well, that that might not work here, or it's different here. And I'm like, it's actually it's different everywhere, but the fundamentals are all the same, you know. But look, just scan on that a little bit if you could mind, if you don't mind. If you've been able to find almost everywhere you go, there's always some opportunities somewhere. It seems like you know, if you just you just got to lift up enough rocks, you know. Oh, definitely. I mean, whenever we're traveling anywhere, so um, Gary is mentioning the fact that we went up to um, Nova Scotia, Canada, and and went around there and. 
and Prince Edward Island and all of that. But then we've also, um, we spent a lot of time in um, Florida this past year because that's where my, my um, husband's parents live and um, really actually like the Fort Lauderdale area. So you know what, maybe I'll touch on that. So um, whenever we go to any of these places, of course, we're checking out what the real estate's going for. And then also, though, vice versa, you check out what the rents are going for. Um, we've actually looked at different properties um, in Florida because we were interested in possibly investing there um, because, you know, Rick's parents live there. I actually also have my broker's license in Florida just to possibly have that for future use um, as a possibility. And what we found in the areas of Florida that we were looking, whether it be around Tampa or even around Fort Myers, is the cash flow for us wasn't there. So we were finding that the rents were pretty low. That was that was issue. So you the the prices were almost considered almost equal to the Virginia prices, but then the rents were pretty low. Which we have some good good rents up here in Virginia. It was our rents, you know, probably an average of fifteen hundred dollars a month. The rents in Florida we were finding were about six seven hundred. So right. um, it it just wasn't going to cash flow like we like, you know. But I will say we don't have a lot of multifamily units up here, you know, in our specific area, Richmond has some, you know, up towards DC, things like that. But in our specific area, we don't have a lot of set multifamily units. That's why we do the houses and basement things. But in the Florida area, there were tons of multi-unit. Okay. So you could cash flow a lot better with a multi-unit and the prices on multi-units were, were pretty good. Um, you know, so that was good. That was better. But what we really liked was again, we're not going to do it unless we're going to live there. So right. um, we were also looking at a place that we might want to land. And so we actually were looking at the um, Fort Lauderdale area. And there's this um, restaurant area that's actually away from the, um, uh, away from the water. You know what? I just, uh, Las Rolas or yeah. something like that. It's something like that area. And I'm sure somebody can correct you. You can get some comments on your podcast for this if they tell you what the area is that I'm talking about. But it's very trendy, up and coming. And so we happen to be, um, you know, sitting at a happy hour at a restaurant. And, um, you know, it's in the bar area. So right next to us were these three guys. So, of course, we start, you know, hey, you mind talking to us about real estate? Like, how much is your apartment? What's this? And so that's that's kind of what we end up doing is we end up investigating through the local people. Do you live here? You know, hey, where are you at? And the one guy, he lived a little bit outside of Fort Lauderdale in Hollywood. And so he was telling us about that real estate. And um, so we were looking on that. The other thing that we do is um, we bike, we bike a lot. And so what we do is on a, on a closer basis, a more intimate basis, I guess, is we'll bike around and look at the neighborhoods and look through the neighborhoods and be kind of investigating what the neighborhoods and things look like. So we are always looking for those opportunities. We just, we really like at this time to invest close to us. So we're, we haven't been able to um, find that deal that's far away from us yet, but um, we're, we're definitely, we are always on the lookout. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I appreciate you saying that. And uh, yeah, Florida is a great place. And one thing about Florida for everybody listening is the landlord tenant law in Florida Yes. Is far more pro owner than oh, yeah. many other states, you know. Yeah. And what's ironic, you know, I've, and I've been all over. I you would think that a place like Pennsylvania will be tougher on owners than Virginia. It's actually not true. Virginia is actually tougher on owners than than Pennsylvania. But it doesn't mean you don't invest there. It just means you have to study. Like like Anna, can, we can't change the market, but we can study the market, right? And then you know what to do with that market. So in Virginia, obviously, I mean, I've had property there. You got property there. People make a lot of money there. Same thing in Pennsylvania, obviously in Florida. So everything you've got to always study the market and and you learn the fundamentals. Remember, it success is three things: education, plus information, plus action. So get the right education, guys. You can't, you can't don't go through life without it. You're, you'll be making mistakes and missing opportunities. And the cool thing about a right education is it shows you how to get and use the right information. Use the information to take meaningful, effective, profitable action. That's really it. In Cal I'm in California right now. I'll be here until the end of April. And a lot of people who are not in California say, well, you can't invest here. It's too expensive. I'm like, well, guess what? In West Hollywood, 82% of the people rent. That means 82% of the residential units are owned by investors. And I know people that invest, they'll buy a property. in like, I know I have some friends that just bought a 24-unit building, right? $2.7 million. They get ready to sell it this month for almost $5 million. And they just bought it. Right. And they fix it up, raise the rents, and you know, you just look for what the market's doing and, and, and diving, guys. And for the, those of you who are like dentists, for example, 
actually, I'll just tell you this, Anna, over the years, I've trained all people from all walks of life. I've had people who are ministers come through the training program. Seven ministers come through the training programs. I've had airline pilots come through the training programs. I've had a, I had a dentist come through the training program one time. And they all get their license, their realtor's license. I know you might think, well, why would I get my license? I'm a dentist. Well, you might get to the point you're 65 years old and you're afraid of being stuck in the chair to your 85 and you get your license and you can, if you're going to invest, at a minimum, keep your own commissions and help your other dentist friends invest too. Get that business and hire a recent college graduate to take your dental appointments. I don't know. I'm just telling you, there's a world of possibilities, but don't feel like you're stuck behind a chair. There are, there are people who can lead by example, like Anna, like me, um, to, to show you how you can leverage what you've already got. If you have your own practice, if you have your own business, you've already got the basic fundamental skills to, to operate a, a successful real estate investing empire. The investor in real estate, even, even if it's just a duplex or a flip. But in any case, Anna, what I want to do now is um, I really appreciate you sharing all this information so people can see how you've invested, what you've done, how you've done it, where you've done it. You also see how you built brokerage and property management businesses on top of what you're already doing, which is the real estate business. But as far as timing, I know from I started my first house was January of 1986. That's I can't believe that's been 33 years. And think about it. At that time, interest rates were still sky high. The Tax Reform Act of '86 was just getting ready to be coming to come out from Congress, which changed the landscape of investing for every, particularly doctors, for example. But it didn't. We still invested, and then, you know, prices were through the roof up through you know, the '90s and early. We we still invested. So as far as timing goes, do you find it no matter what time frame it is, you're you're still in the game, looking for deals. It's not like you start and stop because of what the economy is doing. We just want to know what the economy is doing. I mean, does that does that make sense? Or what's your take on that as far as the timing? Goes? Right. Exactly. I think in in any market, you can buy properties and you can find deals. The thing is, is and I actually I got into real estate when it was like crazy, crazy, crazy. You know, you stick a sign in the yard or don't even stick a sign in the yard. and The house was already sold. And so um, that, you know, people were kind of speculating at that time. They were would buy they would put a contract on a new home and six months later before the by the time the home was built, they could then sell it and then they could make money. And they actually never even really owned the home. So um, that was something you could do then. But you know what? As the market changes and as life shifts and as the economy shifts, we just have to change with it. And there's always deals to be had and there's always different things out there. You know, like, for instance, Rick and I have been really into holding properties, but it's likely that, you know, we had a property last year that went very, very well that needed almost a complete rehab. And we were able to get it um, finished in a month and a half and, and rent it. And so that opened up our mind, like, you know, and, and at that time, if we were to put that house on the market, we could have made 75 grand. And so that opened up our eyes, like, well, maybe we need to start flipping, you know, maybe we need to start flipping these properties too. you know, keep some to hold, but then also to flip. And so there are different ways that you can invest out there. And so that's something that we may end up doing this year. And it's kind of on the drawing board that we might look for a house to flip. Um, the thing with that that's very, 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 very important is you've got to have the right contractors in place ready to go to get it done because you just don't want the holding cost with that, with those flips. Um, so, and you've also got to make sure that you've got a good deal on the, on the front end, just in case anything happens with the market, then you can definitely sell it, you know? So you just want to always keep those different minds. It's really just all about, you know, knowing your numbers and being knowledgeable where you are and with the property and with the area. And um, knowing that those numbers will work no matter what. I mean, we do a cash flow scenario, number scenario, repairs, like how much is all going to cost on, on any property that we even think about buying. Right. And um, we make sure that it is going to benefit us all the way around before we pull that trigger. And I'm more of the 51% type person. And if it, yeah. if it works 51%, then I'm probably going to go for it. My husband's more, it needs to work like almost 90%. So yeah. between the two of us, it's probably got to work about 70% and then we'll pull the trigger. So yeah. we kind of, we work and balance each other out that way. But even if it's, even the 51% of me, the numbers have got to work. And if the numbers don't work, you move on, there will be another property. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah. There's an old saying, the bus will be around again tomorrow, you know? And so real we'll, estate is always there. That's it. Well, the thing too, is you mentioned, uh, potentially flipping. The reality is, is you can flip multi and it's just like you can flip a single yeah. thing. A lot of people miss that all together. And the other thing too, is depending on the economy, you know, prices are up, but financing is tight. 
you can sell it through a lease option. You can lease to somebody with an option to buy later on, and you get to keep the option fee. It's just amazing. There's so many different different strategies. You can you can let them buy it through buy it from you through a land contract or a, a wraparound mortgage. There's all kinds of strategies. And that's what I mean by understanding the rules of the game, the fundamentals, and studying the market. So get the education, get the education, get the information, and take the correct action. That's really all it comes down to. So uh, hey, real quick, Anna, we're, we're getting short here, but I, I personally appreciate you doing this. I know I speak for a lot of people when I say thank you for doing this, but but two things I'll kind of do a double, a, a knock on two birds and one stone here. I want you to give us a little bit of the why, like what what drives you? I mean, I, I know you, I know you personally, you and Rick, uh, but I want you to share with people what what really drives you. Because, you know, like you know me, I'm I'm all about my personal freedom. But here I am in California right now. The last winter I was in Florida. People ask you where I live. I'm like, I really don't live anywhere. I kind of live everywhere. <laughs> so, so for for me, it's all about freedom. But but also, I want people to understand that if they are interested in investing in Virginia, they've got the ace team in you, in Anna Jenkins or Rick Bernays, right there, right in the heart of Virginia. Man, you're you're close to Tidewater. You're close to Richmond. You're close to Northern Virginia. I mean, you could get to all kinds of places in an hour, an hour and a half. Ample opportunities. So. So make sure you let people know how to get a hold of you. Anything you can share with them, a website, an email address, or some special report you wrote. But before that, I just want to, I want people to know why you do what you, what drives you, because they might see in them a little bit what you're describing in yourself. And it might, you just might inspire somebody, Anna, to finally take that move today, get off the, get out of the bleachers, get down on the field and start swinging the bat, you know? Gotcha. So really, really what my why is, is I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do that. But what that actually means to me is a lot in helping people. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm a Christian and I'm very mission oriented. And so if I want to help someone by giving them some money or giving the church money, I want to be able to do that. But we're also action oriented. So um, if a mission trip comes up that we want to be able to do, first off, we need to know that our business is taken care of with the great team that we have so that we can help go and serve others. Another huge thing that we love to do, my husband and I, and this is another reason why we bought the RV, is we love to help with disaster relief. And so I've actually been helping with disaster relief now about nine years. And what that is, it's with the the Southern Baptist Convention, it's the yellow shirts. If you ever see people running around on TV. We work in partner with the Red Cross and Samaritans First, and um, and also I'm sorry, Salvation Army, mostly the Red Cross and Salvation Army, and um, we are first responders on those scenes for mostly hurricanes. But I've also helped with floods. Um, you know, have ice storms. We do chainsaw. Um, we just went for, to remove trees in Atlanta because of the tornadoes that went through there last year. And so with that, and with buying the RV. Now we can actually go and if there's no electric water or showers or anything, then we know that we at least have one <laughs> on our back. Yeah. That is actually important too, because as you know, we can't time disasters and um, we need to be able to help when we're called. And most of the time that's only with a few days notice, you know, maybe yeah. a week now with, with weather prediction being better. But um, really, again, we need to know that our business is taken care of and that our financial aspects are taken care of. And with the way we've set our businesses up and with our investments and the way we invest, we know that that is the case. So then we can go and again, help others. So yeah. I would say that's my big why. And I didn't know if you wanted to comment on that yeah. or if I should get my information. Yeah, no, I, pre- I appreciate it. I, I, for everybody listening, I was going to tell you. So last year when uh, Panhandle of, North, of Florida, the P- Pensacola area, that whole structure was hit mm-hmm. by the hurricane. I mean, I didn't even think the sun had come back yet, guys, the next day. And I got a post from Rick and they were already on the way, brothers and sisters. Yeah, actually, when that there. broke out, in um, when the hurricane hit Pensacola, we were actually yeah. in North Carolina helping from that hurricane that had hit sure. the coast just a couple weeks prior to that. So we were in North Carolina, and then the hurricane happened, actually had taken us out power we didn't know at that time we were doing um they're called mud outs so we were moving everything from the house due to the flooding and everything yeah. that happened in the hurricane and so all of this debris and everything is on the road and sitting there and that's what we were just praying for is that this other hurricane wouldn't come and then throw all this out around about everywhere again so thankfully we actually weren't that affected but we did lose power which was interesting for a couple of days 
Um, but then we got the call to go down and we didn't go all the way to Florida that time. We helped, went and helped with Atlanta because they were hit, yeah. or not Atlanta, I'm sorry, I, I apologize, Georgia, because they were hit very hard in Southern Georgia by tornadoes. So. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, so uh, before we go there, um, if people are interested in investing in basically central Northern Virginia, I mean, I, I, I would encourage you, just look, just talk to Anna. Give her, if you want to interview three agents, make sure Anna's one of them. But how can they get a hold of you? Where can they find you? I see Home Dream Realty right in the background there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So um, you can go to our website. It's homedreamva.com. That's homedreamva. Um, I'm sorry, homedreamrealtyva.com. Mm-hmm. And um, also my my email, you can go to that directly, anna.homedream at gmail.com. That's anna.homedream at gmail.com. Or you can give me a call, 540-300-7376. That's 540-300-7376. Awesome. Well, I'll put that in the uh, in the podcast notes too. So everybody um, will be getting that in, in there. So don't be surprised if you get a call or two. And for everybody listening, I want to tell you, you know, I've, I've, I've known Anna for, for quite a while now, easily over 10 years. And um, absolute top-notch, same with her husband, 100% integrity, just honor and coming from contribution. I mean, they serve with a service heart. And uh, they've helped me along the way. And, and every time they get a new house, seems like I'm one of the, the very first people that gets to go stay in the new bedroom, the new unit. So it's like there's a trail, like the old, you know, George Washington slept here, you know. <laughs> there he was. <laughs> so in any case, um, look him up. And then I think I speak for a lot of people and I say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sharing your time. I know you're busy. you got a lot going on. And uh, it's been a real pleasure having you on. And I appreciate your generosity once again, you know. Thank you, Gary. And you're always welcome. All right. And uh, hey, so hang tight. And everyone else, uh, we will see you on the next edition of Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women. Uh, we always try to bring special guests like Anna that show you to lead by example, not just give you the, the, the what, but the how, so you can see yourself doing the same thing and achieving the results you want to achieve. So uh, go to myinvestorservices.com, join your community, quit waiting around. This is not dress rehearsal. This is the real deal. This is real life. Come on aboard and, and work with people who do investing the right way. You know, subscribe to the to the to the podcast, all kinds of channels. You know, iHeart Tunes and um, you know, Apple Tunes, Apple iTunes. Um, we'd love to see see you. And if you have any suggestions, uh, send them to me. I'd be glad to take them into account. So, and also hope to see you on April fifth, sixth, and seventh in Anaheim with Anaheim Marriott for a three day event, Path of Prosperity. This is a learning educational event. Come prepared. You will not be the same person when you leave that you were when you got there. Just look for the link right there in the podcast notes and you'll be able to participate. Okay, guys, we will see you on the next edition. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Estate Investing for Professional Men and Women. Be sure to go to myinvestmentservices.com to join our community and start building wealth today.